this video, I'll be working through question two of the 2018 electricity exam, level two. Right, question two. What do we got? We got a DC motor. Um, analog. Oh, no, wait, we got a simplified version of an analog ammeter. That's interesting. Current passes through the coil. Um, a, B, C, D, E within a magnetic field, there's your magnet causing a magnetic force that moves the needle, indicating the amount of current that's passing through the meter um, these are actually called the technical name for these are galvanometers um, a lot of physics teachers use them to measure voltage, you can, like if you put a voltage through it will cause current to flow and it is sort of a way to accidentally measure voltage but then actually for measuring current they're old school as not many schools have them these days because they're really old school but they're a really nice piece of kit uh, right current of 2.5 amps passes anti-clockwise so around that way it's got the arrows there um, through the ammeter blah, blah 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 state the direction of the force if any on each of the each section of the wire so you're going to use the right hand slap rule, I forget who, I think it's at Fleming's, no, I don't know, Fleming's right hand slap rule or something like that. Um, magnet, your fingers go in the direction of the magnetic field, so magnetic fields go from north to south, um, just like, well, not just like, but electric fields go from positive to negative, magnetic fields, we just said, we just told you that, well, it was just decided that they go from north to south, um, arbitrarily. Um, your thumb is the direction of the current, and the force comes out of your hand, that's why it's like a slap. Um, so for AB, as you can see, my hand's sort of pointing down, so it is down. Um, down. Or well, you could say into the page, but in sort of implies sort of that way. It's kind of weird how they've done this here, but down's probably the best descriptor of it. Uh, BC, like I said before, north to south, these electrons are moving from B to D. They're parallel to the field, so there's going to be no force um, at all. And if AB was down, DE is literally the opposite situation. You've got the current going this way. Ooh, I'm going to twist my hand. Um, magnetic field is going in, like from north to south by there. Current's going sort of that way. It's because it's going from D to E, so it's going to be up. Sweet, easy peasy. Right, this is kind of dubious. The total force is 0.6 newtons. I looked at the answer schedule to see what they were meaning with that because I assumed, well, I sort of got stumped with this. I got the answer wrong because I just assumed this was the force on one wire. But actually, you got 0.3 newtons going one way, 0.3 newtons going the other way. Um, maybe it would have been best to talk about the total torque, but whatever. The total force um, is 0.6 newtons, so it implies each wire is 0.3. Uh, two and a half amps has passed through. Calculate the effective length um, of the coiled wire between A and B. The magnetic field strength is that. So in your formula sheet, you've got F equals B I L. Use the force to pay the bills. Um, in other words, it is the magnetic field times the current times the length of wire. Um, I'll just scribble that out. Actually, I don't need that. Um, in other words, the length is equal to the force divided by the magnetic field times the current, which is going to be 0 0.3, because we're just going to look at one, like the wire from A to B. So that's got half the force, the other half of the force is D to E, divided by, what is it, 0 0.2 Tesla times currents 2.5, and that is going to give me 0 0.6 meters. There we go, because that's 2SF, that needs to be 2SF. Next question. Is it going to turn over neatly for me? Right. right, at a later time, a metal rod has moved downwards um, between a horseshoe magnet at a constant speed of 7.5 metres per second across a strong 3.5 Tesla magnetic field. That is insane. 3.5 Tesla, you can... I'm not even sure if you can buy that without making... Well, no, I don't think you can. Even like crazy neodymium magnets... And then you set up like a funny array of them. You put one Tesla. Oh, no, you can. You can buy actually really, really, really huge ones that are 3.5 Tesla. That's like MRI strength, but whatever. Um, the rods, 0.32 meters, blah, 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 blah. Horseshoe magnets, that wide. So 
it's not the length of the rod, it's just the length of how much rod is in the field. So that's why they've given this length here, because um, that'll stump you. Um, calculate the voltage which is induced in the rod. Voltage in your formula sheet, I'll just show you where it is. Uh, where is it? V induced is the magnetic field times the velocity times the length of wire inside the magnetic field. So that is going to be equal to V, little v, because it's the velocity, times the length, which is going to be equal to 3.5 tessa, which is crazy strong, times velocity, what is it, 7.5, times 0 0.16, because it's how much is in the magnetic field. Uh, gives me 4.2 volts. Um, right, which end is positive? That's a good question. What are we going to do? We will look at the force on the individual electrons and then figure out from there. So we're assuming the magnetic field is north to south. The velocity of the electrons or the direction of the velocity is downwards. So all the and electrons are negatively charged or less yeah look at electrons because electrons are negatively charged electrons come out of the back of your hand um, because when you do like the right hand slap rule it's always the direction of current which is like the opposite direction of the flow of the electrons blame, blame benjamin franklin for that um, electrons flow opposite direction to the conventional current um, so if my thumb is pointing down my magnetic fields are pointing from uh, like north to south, the electrons should go to end B um, because they'll, they'll experience a force out of the hand, um, whereas all the positive charges, you know, positive charges will go to A. So A is going to be positive. Really, they don't move. Protons don't move. They're too heavy for that. But all the electrons are going to rush to B, which will make A positive. Sweet as. Right. What do we got? We've got three s experiments. Um... We have one experiment where the rod is moving, just through the magnetic field. One experiment experiment where the rod and the wire is moving through the magnetic field. Another experiment where the rod is moving through the magnetic field, the wire is not. But on oh, this one here, the wire is outside of the magnetic field. Um, so that pretty much covers it. You can read that, but that sums it up. For the experiments two and three, state whether in volt state whether a voltage is induced and wire AB. There is no wire AB, they're all rods, but whatever, that's just a mistake that they made in writing this paper. Um, I'll pause it, write it, and... Right, so in both experiments, so two and three, a voltage will be induced in the rod AB, um, but in only two, a current will float. Now take that back, that's not two. And only three, a current will flow, not two. Um, right, this is a really subtle question and requires a lot of, like, a very good understanding the difference between voltage, which is potential difference, which when some people say potential difference, that's very vague. It literally means the electrons have, like, separated apart. So one end has less electrons than the other, statistically speaking. So here, rod... AB is moving down, so all the electrons, so here's right, right hand slap rule, um, it's moving down, all the electrons are going to move to A, um, because, the, oh, what? no, right, north to south, that's electric field, that's a magnetic field, the velocity is downwards, again, no, take it back, all the electrons are going to shunt to B. It's going to leave A positively charged, so you'll have a voltage between B and A, there will also be a voltage um, along that little wire as well, which will in turn mean that they'll cancel each other, so the, the voltages will cancel each other out. It's sort of like checking two positive ends together. Um, this becomes positively charged, this becomes positively charged here. Um, so there's, there's no way that like electrons will flow down this wire, because as soon as they get into the field on this wire, they'll just get shunted back the other way. Um, they'll all just get pushed to this end on both wires. There's no way current can flow. Here, current can because the wire is not moving. The wire here is moving, so they'll experience a force. It's, it's a very subtle thing to pick up. Um, but there you go. Right. For each of the experiments, justify whether current flows through the closed loop. Explain the underlying physics principles involved. 
Right, I'll pause it, write all the answers, and then discuss. All right, so for the first one, I've said current, and let's put brackets I for symbol for current, will flow as AD is outside the field. So here's AD, oh, is it AD, it's outside the field, so current will flow. Um, and I've said it flows from B to A, you can prove that to yourself later. Charge separation is induced in the end of the rod as each electron experiences a force, and I'll put, what are we trying with there? F equals BVQ, and that's the force that it feels. Um, two, no current will flow as a voltage will be induced in B, uh, rod BA and EA. So like, that, that rod, oh, we can't even see that. That rod there and that wire there um, will both experience the exact same voltage. This end will become, what was it, what did we get? Uh, positively charged, then it becomes negatively charged. Um, so the potentials are the same. The length, the velocity, and magnetic field are identical. What did I say? Um, these potentials are the same. The length, this gives a net potential of zero, so no current flow. So that's, oh, that's a bit vague, isn't it? Um, these potentials are the same as the length, velocity, and field. Uh, that refers to the length of the, the wire. I oh, hope that makes sense. Um, it's probably not the best answer for it. Yeah. And I'm a bit dubious about this whole, this gives a net potential of zero, so no current flows. Yeah, not entirely true. Um, it's just because it's inside the magnetic field. As soon as it pops out of the magnetic field, um, you will get current flowing because the electrons will rush back to the other end. So yeah, that's all right. Um, current I will flow, or current symbol for I, um, will flow from B to A. So here is... Uh, the rod B to A as charge separation is induced. Um, there is no voltage induced in the wire FE, which is this one here, because it's not moving. Um, as the wire is stationary, it will, however, experience a force because the force downwards, because current's going to start flowing. Current's going to start flowing on that wire, and now it'll experience a force. But that's like a side bit that it wasn't on the answer schedule. I thought I'd just chuck in there because it's kind of neat.